hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber a warm welcome back this video is part of the viewer comment response series where i respond to a comment made by a viewer against one of my videos by video and the particular comment for this video i have been asked to talk about longchamp bags I'm Anesu Sagonda, and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, or you're into luxury, but you want to focus more on quality under the radar brands, or you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, then my content is geared towards you. Longchamp is a privately owned family business that was started in 1948 by the Cassegrain family and they were focused on producing luxury leather smoking pipes. Over the years they started producing other products and then by the 70s they were producing bags. It's a brand I can literally only describe as a sleeping giant. It's a giant in so many ways. The phenomenal quality of the leathers that they use coupled with their exceptional craftsmanship people are literally sleeping on the quality of their leathers when people think of uh, longchamp it's typically le pliage that comes to mind le pliage is a canvas bag with uh, russian leather trimming around uh, the edges the handles there's a flap over it's a bag that comes in different sizes and a whole slew of different colors but people don't actually realize there are a number of leather bags behind the brand Longchamp and the leather they use is amazing. It's next level. As a brand, they are within your affordable level of uh, luxury. I'm going to attach above a video where I talk in detail about the different levels of luxury. If you haven't watched that video, please do take a look because it's fantastic for just luxury across the board and laying the foundation. Longchamp is affordable luxury. So it's bags priced between 300 pounds and 900 pounds. The cheapest Longchamp bag is about 250 pounds. The most expensive is just over um, 900 pounds. You are getting affordable um, level luxury at a higher quality, but lower price point. The quality they use, I would say is accessible core level so bags that are a price between a thousand pounds one thousand five hundred pounds but you're getting it at affordable level luxury prices it's a brand that packs a mighty quality punch when you when you consider the leathers that they are using uh, they're focused on using uh, byproduct leather so it's leather that has first of all the animals being killed for food consumption and then they take the leathers and they use those they don't work with exotics or with fur. The exotics they work with are embossed leather. Um, one of their styles, their iconic styles, the Rosso, um, the bag is made in a number of different leathers, one of them being the embossed croc style, but they don't use um, real exotic as such. And what they do is they work with um, a very small, carefully considered selection of tanneries around the world who treat the, the leathers uniquely for them. The way they treat the leathers, you will never find the same type of leathers being used by any other brands. So think, for example, Le Foulonne, um, and also their natural calfskin, both of which I'll talk about in a bit. And they work with a number of tanneries that they've had long-standing relationships with. There's a tannery in Brazil, in Italy, there's one in France, and the French tannery is called Haas, and Haas is owned by Chanel. So that in itself is a key indicator of the the superb quality of the leathers that they are, they're using to make their bags. And then on top of that, um, all of the tanneries that they work with are part of the leather working group and they are gold certified. So they are brands that are incredibly environmentally focused. The leather working group is um, an organization I briefly mentioned. Um, I'm going to attach the video above where I spoke about that, but it's an organization that's focused on making the entire leather industry um, a lot more responsible. Their focus is on um, encouraging transparency, making brands a lot more accountable. 
They focused on things like managing the chemicals used, used within the supply chain, the air and noise emissions, managing those as well as addressing things like the water and energy that's used within uh, the production methods and just making sure that brands are accountable, they're transparent and their focus is on being environmentally conscious and active in how they produce, they process their leathers. So the tanneries that Longchamp work with are gold certified. So it's incredibly important to these tanneries. But it's something that a lot of the other bigger brands are also uh, doing. They're working with other leather certified, leather working group uh, organizations. Think for example, Prada, your British Berries, uh, Marbury, Burberry, Acne, uh, you have Dunhill. You also have all of the brands within Louis Vuitton, Moe Hennessy that use leather. So it's the way the industry are going. It's important that people are working with brands that not only talk about being envir environmentally aware and pay lip service, but actually instill within their organizations processes that are uh, productive towards reducing the negative impact of uh, certain practices within the production industry and making production a lot more environmentally friendly. I was going to talk about Longchamp possibly end of the year, next year, but a few months ago I was in South Africa. I'm going to attach the video above and I went around to see a number of the luxury malls and the highlight of my entire luxury excursion was realizing, discovering that Longchamp is in South Africa. 15, 20 years ago, when you went onto the African continent and you wanted to buy luxury, luxury shop, for example, what you would find is typically end of season stuff or stuff that wasn't even in season. It was stuff that didn't do well in the West, for example. Some of it wasn't even in good condition. But brands, Western brands have now woken up to the fact that there's a lot of money sloshing around on the African continent and they're not actively pursuing it. And most brands do it through South Africa. So think of your big ticket brands like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Alexander McQueen, for example. They've opened numerous stores in South Africa. But when I saw Longchamp, it really warmed my heart because Longchamp is a slightly lower level of luxury to your Gucci and Louis Vuitton, for example but it's a brand that packs a mighty quality punch. It's taking advantage of being the first mover onto the African continent, one of the first movers, and it's a great brand for South Africa. I can't think of a better brand for South Africa when you consider the, the quality of the leathers, the craftsmanship, the range, but, but most of all, a friendlier price point for a solid quality product. That really made my trip. It was the highlight of my trip, as I mentioned. And, it just brought Longchamp to the forefront of my mind. And then when I got the, the request to talk about it, I was like, I have to do it. And of late in the West, and particularly in the United Kingdom, I'm seeing Longchamp raising their profile, um, just adding new designs that are, are putting Longchamp more on the, the mainstream radar. So people are aware of the goodness because people associate the brand with uh, Le Pliage, but they actually have leather uh, bags that people are sleeping um, on the quality. I've got a selection of six bags I would like to talk to you about as a way of introducing Longchamp leathers to you. Three of those styles are iconic styles, or well, strictly speaking, two of them, Le Foulonnet and Rousseau. The third is a variation of the original Le Pliage. Um, it's a style, as I've told you that has done incredibly well for Longchamp. It's what's put them on the uh, radar. And with a style that's incredibly successful, understandably, they've created variations of that style. Variations of that original style itself, they've tweaked the shape, and they've also introduced the bag in a number of other materials in addition to the original nylon. I think I may have mentioned coated canvas at the beginning. It's actually nylon, but they do have a coated canvas variation that um, was, addition, was added um, much later on, which I'll talk about in a second. And then the other three styles that I will talk about are more recent additions. They're slightly more trendy. They're more in keeping in line with uh, styles that are known, tried and tested and doing well in the market. And they've created their own variation, their own take of your slightly trendier, but still classic styles. The first style I'm going to talk about is Le Pliage Queer. It's the leather variation of 
the original Le Pliage Nylon. Before the queer, they've introduced other styles, for example, Le Pliage Filet, which is a cotton uh, variation of the bag, a uh, cotton fabric. Um, it's a bag you can use uh, shopping on the beach, for example. They've also created the coated canvas variation called Le Pliage City. Still same original shape, but the bag is made from a thick, structured, coated canvas material that's incredibly resistant, it's waterproof, it's a lot more robust and sturdy, as you can imagine, than uh, in comparison to the, uh, the nylon. And the one I want to really highlight, I want to focus on, is the queer. It's um, the same original style, comes in three size option. There's also a, a strap that goes with the bag, but it's made entirely of leather. Matisse leather from South Africa. Matisse leather is a mix of lamb skin and goat skin. It's wonderfully soft, it's buttery soft. It's lightweight, it's resistant, and the bag itself is collapsible. Comes in three sizes, and you can put it in an, inside another bag, close it if you don't need it, in a suitcase, for example, exactly like the original, but it's made entirely of Matisse leather. And I like the Matisse leather, I like leather because it gives the bag, which can be used um, across the board, whether it's as a gym bag, a work bag, a holiday bag, travel bag, it just gives it a, a more elevated, a more elegant look and feel to the bag when you use the leather. The next three styles I'm going to talk about are the recent additions, the slightly trendier styles. The first is the box trot, which is the most recent addition to the Longchamp family. It's a structured box calfskin bag. And when I first saw it, literally a few weeks ago, it immediately reminded me of a video I recently recorded, which I'm going to attach above, where I was comparing the Celine Triomphe to the Christian Dior Montagne 30. And I was asking, which bag is classier? The box trot sits very comfortably in between those two styles. It's very similar in terms of the, the design, um, structured box calfskin, slightly rounded edges like the Triumph, uh, whereas the Montagna 30 is the more angular edges. The box trot and uh, the Montagna 30 are, box, are both made from box calfskin. But the biggest difference, and it's a noteworthy difference, is the box calfskin from Christian Dior is matte and it doesn't have a sheen to it at all. Whereas the box trot from Longchamp the box calfskin has been uniquely processed um, for Longchamp by the tannery. And it's been processed in such a way that they've maintained the natural oils of the calfskin within the leather. What that means in practical terms is as the leather matures, as the bag, as you carry the bag, it develops a patina. And a patina is what people essentially buy the leather for. It's how it ages. It darkens very gently, very subtly, and then it, it develops a very gentle sheen on top of the leather. And that's something that you don't get at all with the Montagna 30. And I mentioned it in the video. Even if you, um, I highly recommend getting a soft cloth, which you use to just polish the bag, just coax out the natural oils like you do with the box trot. You can't do that with the Montagna 30. There's no natural oil at all. You need to use cream, for example. And one thing I've distinctly noticed about the Christian Dior uh, bag, the box calfskin, is that over time it starts to look tired. It doesn't look as expensive or as elevated a leather. Uh, the matte element looks tired, it looks dry, and you constantly need to use cream just to uh, maintain the look the matte look of the leather, whereas you don't have that. You won't have that with the box trot, provided you've got a soft cloth, you just fluff it from time to time. If it gets wet, make sure you dry it, let it dry naturally, and then you just polish it all the time. It's going to age beautifully. It's going to look absolutely fantastic over time. And you're paying a fraction of the price of not only the Christian Dior, but also the Celine you would pay for the Triumph and you're getting a leather that compares very confidently when it comes to the quality of the leather and also the craftsmanship of the bag. The box trot sits very comfortably between those two um, brands. You wouldn't think it was inferior. It very confidently holds its own, and that's down to the fantastic leather they've used coupled with the craftsmanship. 
The box trot comes in um, three different sizes. Um, so it's great either as an evening bag, a day bag, if you go for something bigger. It also comes with two straps. So you can wear the bag over the shoulder or as a crossbody bag. And you also get a, a wallet option that comes with the bag. The second style I'd like to talk about is the mailbox. The mailbox um, comes in three different sizes and you have two style options. It can either come in full cowhide and the cowhide is it's thick it's resistant it's very much like safiano leather in terms of the look and feel or you can have the second variation where you have two or three leathers a mixture of either the cowhide uh, with the brushed leather which, which looks like suede or you can also have the option of a third leather the matisse in that and you get different um, leathers coming together but what you'll notice distinctly about the mailbox is it's a weighted bag in terms of the weight of it. It's substantial, it it's a good weight. It doesn't feel light and cheap, but it also looks expensive and it at a fraction of the price. If you would hold it against, for example, the Celine luggage, uh, it's the same trapeze shape uh, together with the mailbox, it wouldn't look vastly inferior. And you think, oh, this is a cheaper brand, cheaper quality leather. It very confidently holds its own in terms of the weight, the look, the feel, the craftsmanship. It's a beautiful bag. Uh, comes in three sizes. You also have an additional strap, so you can wear it either over the shoulder, cross body, and you also have a wallet option with the bag. And then the third style, is one that's been around for a few seasons is the brioche made from a wonderfully soft lambskin it's quilted uh, lambskin it's a quilted bag and it's inspired by the brioche pastry uh, bun it's a very parisian elegant style trendy with the chain uh, strap which you can either fold in half and you can wear it over the shoulder or you fully lengthen the strap and you can wear it as a crossbody bag it's a great bag that can be worn effortlessly from day to evening. Daytime, you can open out the poppers on the side so you get more room. In the evening, close the poppers. It's a little more compact, beautiful evening bag. And it comes in two sizes, small and a medium. And you also have um, a wallet option that also goes with that bag. Iconic styles. The first is Rosso, which was introduced in 1993, same year as the original Le Pliage was introduced in. The Rosso, very much in keeping with the look and feel of the brand, subtle, discreet, no logos, very easy, timeless uh, styles to wear. The Rosso comes in a number of different style variations three different leathers. It either comes in calfskin, in cowhide, which is like safiano leather. And then uh, the third option is embossed uh, crocodile. So it's leather that's um, been embossed with the crocodile uh, design. As I mentioned earlier, they don't use exotics or any fur. Very simple bag with just the, the buckle, the duffel coat buckle on the front. The inside is lined with brushed leather. The two linings that Longchamp use as a brand is brushed leather that looks like suede or the fabric which uh, is in the Le Foulonnet, the other iconic style I'll talk about in a second. The Rosso comes in a number of variations as I've mentioned, also different size options, but it's, it's down to just a, a wonderfully discreet, very easy to wear, no logo, no fuss, no fanfare bag. Um, the calf skin is the same calf skin I mentioned earlier. All you need is a cloth to just buff it and it just develops the patina with time. But it's a beautiful, timeless design that you will wear and enjoy for a very long time. The second style is Le Foulonnet, my personal favorite from the brand. I like the simplicity of the style. It comes in a number of different bag variations from wallets to handbags to to um, travel bags, to work bags, to backpacks. It's all about the leather. When it comes to grained leather, you either get the big grain, for example, think the Togo from Hermes, or you get the slightly smaller grain. I'm a huge fan of the smaller grain. I feel the smaller grain is neater, it's a little simpler, and it's more elegant. It looks more expensive than the bigger grain, but that's just personal to me. But the Le Foulonnet grain is unique again to 
uh, Longchamp, as I've mentioned, all their leathers are uniquely treated for them. And I like that. It's very distinct. When you see it, you know it's Longchamp and it's only Longchamp who use that particular grain. The bag comes in a, a whole slew of different variations, as I've mentioned, depending on what you like. If I was to recommend a bag for a man, it would definitely be within the Fulone range, whether it's a backpack, um, a document case, or it would be a weekend bag, it would definitely come from the Fulone range. What I like about the Fulone, apart from the grain, as I've mentioned, is the fact that it's the style that gives Longchamp the chance to show off their craft, to show off how good they are, how good their craftsmanship is. With Fulone, there's very little metal on the bags. Some of the bags, for example, the smaller handbags don't have any metal on them. All they use is leather. Um, and it's about the craftsmanship, how they sew the leather, how they bring the bag together so they don't need metal. And then on top of that, with their edges, with the fulone, it's all turned edges. Turned edges are more expensive, require more skill to produce than the edge coated uh, edges to protect the edges. So it's a chance for Longchamp to show off their leathers, their craftsmanship, how they sew the bags, how they put them together, how they get around the metal. And then also the turned edges. It's a complete product that showcases um, just how brilliant Longchamp as a brand is. Fulone is also the style where I can speak from personal experience. I have a wallet I have carried for the last 16 years and it's from Longchamp. And it's the Le Fulone range. And the only issue I have with this wallet, and this is because this wallet has been with me through thick and thin and I don't want to repair it, but I can repair it. Uh, Longchamp have said they can restitch the corners. I'm not angry with the fact that the stitches, stitches have come undone just on the corners where the wallet closes. I would expect that over time, but everything else about the wallet is perfect. The leather hasn't scuffed. The pattern has slowly uh, softened on top because this is a wallet I've had for 16 years. It's in every single bag. I use it every single day. And even when I'm carrying um, an evening bag or um, I'm going out without a handbag, I always have my wallet and my phone. And so it's a, a wallet that gets a lot of usage. I am incredibly impressed at how well it has worn and there's nothing wrong with it. The lining is not torn. Uh, the stitches have not unraveled anywhere. The leather has not torn anywhere else. It is in absolute perfect condition. And I may get it stitched. I'm not particularly upset or annoyed. I like it. I like the fact that this is how my wallet has aged. But it's a testament to the quality of the leather uh, that Le Foulonnet, um is made from, the range, and also the craftsmanship, the stitching of um, the wallet. Longchamp is a brand I have a lot of regard for, together with Bali, two brands that are very much punching above their categories. They are producing bags using leathers that are of superior quality to the level of luxury that they're in. I've tried to make this video as comprehensive as possible and, and tell you everything I know about Longchamp without sending you to sleep. But if there are any further questions, let me know as always in the comments down below. But thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again soon.